was a little worried there, by the way. There was just like a, <laughs> and I didn't know where that was going to go. I'm like, this could be really awkward. They didn't know it what turned to out okay. It. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they didn't know if it was okay to clap. Yeah. All right. So um, we have your people watching Twitch. Awesome. Right? So, Excellent. Um, now, people probably heard of the Twitch acquisition, but just to kind of get people caught up to kind of frame the rest of sure. our discussion, can you give us uh, all the different ways you guys are touching gaming right now? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, Amazon, we've been in uh, games business in various ways for a number of years now. Uh, we started selling games to customers uh, in 2006, so it wasn't even that long ago. But this is our retail business where we sell physical and digital games. Uh, we also have an app, our app store where we sell digital games to customers through that. And then if you look at AWS, uh, we've been uh, building and providing cloud infrastructure services to game developers for a long time. And we focus very hard as, uh, um, on serving game developers as customers through that, through, that, um, through that business. And then the third area is we have Amazon Game Studios where we've actually started making games. And so when we looked at Twitch, it was really uh, a, a natural extension along that same continuum, which was we're making significant material investments in games, and um, and Twitch is, you know, obviously just a phenomenal company and what they've built, the community that's that's built around it. So, cool. Now, those all seem like kind of disparate things, right? Sure. It's like, okay, you're selling physical games, you got digital games, you got you're, you're making games, you're also live streaming games. So, I'm assuming there's somebody who's smart at the top. Maybe this is you. Maybe there's somebody else, <laughs> but someone who has like a long-term vision for how these all, all these things tie together. Sure. That it's not just like, you know, a 10-year-old kid just saying, "I want that thing. I want that thing. I want that thing." You know, it's like, what's the master plan here? Sure. Well, if, if you think of vision, it really boils down to a simple thing, which goes back to Amazon's vision, which is to be the Earth's most customer-centric company. And if we think about that, there's there's some real meat to that, which is. Um, uh, first of all, you have consumers, people who uh, want to find, discover, and buy games. And then, there's, um, and then there's game developers or content creators. We, have con we consider content creators generally a very important set of customers for Amazon. And, and that's certainly the case with game developers. And so as we think about um, the vision and what we're trying to create, we think very, very deeply and hard around those customer experiences that we're trying to create, what we can solve on behalf of customers. And um, there's many examples in, um, in, in, in each of our areas of businesses that represent that customer focus. And uh, just to kind of give a, a little bit of a, a window into the Amazon process, before we endeavor on any new initiative, the very first thing we do is we write a press release, which is the thinking part of it and the product part, which is what is, it that, what is the problem or the solution that we're going to extend to customers in very, very specific terms. And when you get that press release to a point where you feel like you're, you've got something exciting on your hands, then you move forward. Okay. So I get the big picture idea, but let's say Twitch, you know, you guys obviously spent a lot of money on that. Uh, how does that fit into that strategy specifically? Sure. Like, do you see them as uh, sort of all the gamers as like marketers for you to help you on the retail side? Yeah. So, so this, this is a great question. So first, first and foremost, when we, when we got to, uh, we've known the Twitch, uh, uh, leadership team for a while now. I mean, I think I met Em and Kevin for the first time three years ago, just as they were getting started. And when we got to know them and their team, um, generally speaking, what we found is there was uh, an awesome fit with Amazon culture. And those things were pretty straightforward, which were super focused on customers. And for them, they have broadcasters as customers, as well as game developers, as well as consumers and the viewers, um, focused on invention and creating new experiences, and then focused on the long term. So then, you know, through, through the course of getting to know them, we obviously became interested in them and, um, and from, a, from a standpoint of an acquisition. And so when we, um, when we really thought about it fitting in, if you will, we really had those exact things in mind, which is if you think of the long term and, and what, you can, what, what Twitch could become and what, where it could go generally, there's many, many ideas that you could argue are fantastic ideas. And so the way we look at it in terms of uh, fitting in is first and foremost, it's an excellent team. They're very smart. They're very customer focused. They're very long-term oriented. We want to basically learn from them, get to know each other. And then over time, what we're going to do is find ways to work with them to help them move even faster um, um, towards uh, you know, creating interesting new experiences for customers. But there's, there's certainly areas where we say, OK, how could this fit with these other parts of Amazon? And we have those things in mind. But now, to be fair, it's so early, so early on. Um, um, it's, it's a good chance that 
that those things will evolve and change over time. But if you take the long-term view of what Twitch is and the community that's been created and the experiences that it's built just in within just what it is, I mean, you can look at simple things, which is the actual Twitch experience is new and it's grown really fast and it continues to grow really fast. And then you have simple thing like Twitch plays Pokemon. Now you have a game where the community is actually interacting with the game directly, which is super interesting. And so you have those simple extensions like that um, that are incredibly interesting um, uh, possibilities for them. But uh, like I said, like, there's a big, big part of this, which is first and foremost, just keep going. Like Those guys run the business. Um, they're an independent subsidiary run by the same management team, so on and so forth. OK. So uh, moving on away from Twitch for a moment. Uh, so talking Fire TV, Fire Phone, these things haven't really lit the world on fire. Hmm? It's like that? All right, good, good. <laughs> Thank that was you. like a joke grenade. It was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, thank yeah. you. Um, so how do you get the installed base up from here, especially in light of comp and with competition from you know, Google, Apple, and uh, how do you get developers to want to support a platform that's, you know, that's not as sexy as you know, Android or iOS? That is a, um, well, first I'd say those, I, those are great devices. I, um, uh, we, look at, we look at Fire Phone and Fire TV, and I'll give you a couple, uh, when we announced Fire Phone, the submissions to our app store doubled straight away. And we already have a lot of developers that come in, come and submit and sell um, games and applications to our app store, and we saw that enthusiasm spike when we announced, announced the device. And with Fire TV, um, we're already extending uh, internationally. We just announced uh, expansion to Germany and the UK. And in general, um, you know, you can expect from, from Amazon uh, is a lot of focus on customers. We're going to take the long view on these things, and we're going to experiment, and we're going to invent, and things will only get better over time. But if you, I mean, you, you, I, one of the things I love about Fire TV, for example, is um, it's the first device of its kind that offers the range of content that it offers. You can get a full host of, of video and TV shows from a range of different providers, including Amazon and Netflix, Hulu and others. Um, you have mu different music offerings that are available on the device. I saw this morning we announced that Spotify is available as well. Um, and then all the way through to Kindle Free Time, where if you have kids, you can, you can um, determine how much time and what the kids are able to view and, and play. And then you have this massive selection of really fun games at affordable prices. So a device that's $99, um, you, there's no other device that's available that offers that breadth of content. And I think that's very exciting and, and, and certainly resonating well with customers too. But in terms of developers, as these things get bigger and bigger, we make it, they'll be more and more interested um, in developing for them. And a big part of it is making it easy for them as well. So uh, I think we found that over three quarters of applications that are already built for Android just work on, on Amazon devices. So there's a big part of this, which is you can get incremental distribution with little to no additional work, and that's very promising. Okay, but to, to be fair, like a lot of, most of what you just mentioned, you know, like all those movie music options, you know, you can find on other devices. And also, like what you said about get, uh, drawing Android developers, so these are then games that you can find on other platforms as well. Like, what is ultimately, like what makes it kind of distinguishable and what's like the personality, or what, what defines the, the Fire platforms to be attractive for developers? Um, well, I think just taking the Fire TV, like I would surmise that there, there, there isn't another device that has that range of content. I mean, the video, you're right, there's other devices that have a lot of video, but then you, you, you pull in the, you know, the, the huge selection of games that are available, and that's very compelling. And we see things, situations like in my household where my kids whiz through and find games they're familiar with or playing Minecraft, where you have one kid playing on the television through Fire TV and another one playing on uh, a Fire uh, tablet or an iOS device or whatever it happens to be, and to all be able to play at the same time, it's, it's just it's an experience that's not available um, through any other TV devices. And then if you think about this Fire, um, the Fire devices in general, the, 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 when we start with these, again, we start with this premise of how do we build something great for customers from the standpoint of what we're offering. And the underlying premise is we want to be able to offer premium devices at non-premium prices. Yep. Uh, remind us of some of the talent you've recruited on the sure. development side and how they fit into your strategy as well. Because on, on the surface, it might appear like, well, spending a lot of money on big name developers for mobile products might seem a little bit excessive. 
but again, like, you know, what's, what's the strategy from Amazon's point of view? Sure, so we think about our game studios, um, and, and as you guys know, you have to start with incredible um, games makers. You want the best artists in the world, the best designers in the world. And what we want, fundamentally we have, um, so we've been able to recruit people that have worked on some of the best games you've ever heard of, like Left 4 Dead, um, Bioshock, Team, or, uh, Team Fortress, as well as um, uh, Portal. Portal, exactly, with Kim Swift. And so as we talk to those people and talk to them about Amazon Game Studios, you know, they have the question too, like what are you guys about? What's, what's happening there? And a big part of, uh, as we think about making games, well, we, first of all, was, we identified, we think there's a, just a gap in game development, where at one end of the spectrum, you have a number of games that are built that are sort of word games, match three games, um, and these games are a lot of fun, and I play them. And at the other end of the spectrum, you have games that are multiple hundreds of people that take multiple year budgets. And those are games that are really fun as well. And what we observed is, is there's, there's, a, there's a type of game that exists in the middle of that spectrum that basically indexes very high on creativity, on hand craftsmanship, that you can tell that the people that worked on it had the ability to take, had a lot of, a, had a lot of autonomy and the ability to be able to shape the game the way they wanted to, to shape it. And so when we tell that story to these, these fantastic game developers that have worked on games on some of the biggest franchises um, um, ever made, they're very compelled by that. They like the idea that they could work on a game and be able to have a tremendous amount of creative freedom and do something that's innovative and unique. And then you combine that with the sandbox that's Amazon, it's, it's super compelling. So we talked about um, our retail business selling games, AWS and cloud infrastructure, and then you have um, our devices business, and you think about that as your sandbox, and now we've added Twitch. And as a game developer, if you take this environment where you have some great game developers where they have the freedom to come up with creative ideas, they can start to push the boundaries of what this sandbox is able to offer, both to consumers vis-a-vis -vis the games we make, as well as to other developers vis-a-vis -vis the innovations that we drive through the various um, uh, pieces. And do you want to keep that content exclusive to Amazon devices? So, so all of our games launch um, exclusively on Amazon devices now, but um, I'd say that uh, as anything we do, like, you know, uh, you're, you're focused on customers and you're thinking about the, the right way to take it over the long term. So it may change at some point in time, but right now it's, it's all launching exclusively on Amazon devices. Okay. Now, looking at the game side, so let's say, you know, you're a company, you're not in a position to write big multi-figure checks to acquire a Twitch or to hire big name developers, you know, like, can you kind of share some of your experience, like what, what you guys have done to grow the gaming side of your business specifically that's a little bit more practical? Sure. Um, so if you think about our, uh, there's, a couple, there's a couple of different specific ways. So if you think about the consumer offering, so as if you just go back to the customer focus piece. If you look about consumers, the, the things we focus on there are price selection and convenience. So these are the, these are the, um, these are the, as Jeff refers to them as the obvious things that you, you, know, you want to make sure you pay attention to. So offering customers great selection, ability to find and discover that great selection, the shopping experience being as convenient as possible, and offer competitive good prices. And when we've been able to do that, we focus for many, many years on building the games business on Amazon as, as well as our app store. And we find those simple things resonate with consumers. And they've been very specific and we focus on them and talk about them in all the conversations we have internally. And then for developers, there's this piece around helping developers reach more customers as well as um, move more quickly. So if you think about what AWS has created, it's fantastic, which is the, no longer the need to stand up your own data centers. And to have a team of people that are up all, you know, that are working tirelessly in the spirit of um, reliability, scalability, um, um, cost, per performance for the different services we offer. These various things have allowed game developers to spend more, time, more of their time focused on, on the creative aspects of their game and less time on the infrastructure and the muck, if, as you, if you will. So those are very specific areas where both for consumers and developers, we've, um, we've worked tirelessly and very specifically to try to, um, um, you know, try, to, try to serve them well. Now, let's say you get a creative product. You know, obviously, there's going to be first-party product that you guys are going to want to promote. But let's say, you know, how does a developer who has that creative freedom, you know, they're able to create good products, how do you tackle that common problem of discoverability? You know, like, uh, 
the, you know, it's always, you know, positioning on top 10 charts sure. or finding some placement on a store, but how do you, do you guys plan on tackling that problem any differently? Um, no, I mean, I, I, yeah, yeah, I do think we'll, we'll tackle it differently. And we have a few different things, and you can kind of go back to the roots of, of Amazon. Like, you know, we started as you know, selling books. We sell millions and millions of different books on the site. And if you look at the books business from that standpoint, there's, there's, there's uh, more selection vis you know, vis vis the books that have been written and are available than there are, than are games and, and app stores. And the way you tackle that problem is very, very much um, finding different ways to help customers discover the content. So top sellers are certainly helpful and those are useful, but I think they're also just not enough. And then um, in the spirit of not enough, well, what are the other different mechanisms you can use? And we look for um, various similarities, like people who bought this also bought, that you can find throughout the Amazon site. And those things have, in, have been all through the mission of trying to help customers find products and, and, and items that they might be interested in. And it's worked very, very well. And it also helps those, a lot of eyeballs, um, you know, if you find the right product and the right customer and you match them too, you end up with a higher conversion rate and customers end up buying more things. And, and they're, you know, rewarding you, if you will, with, with their purchases. That's an indicator that you're offering them a better experience. And so we, th we look at the games business for sure in, in digital and think there's a lot of room for innovation and improvement. Um, in some ways, using some of those same mechanics, but also the, there's going to be additional you know, invention that'll have to be made as well. Can you go over some of those possible ideas? Like what advantages can you get working on an Amazon platform? You, you know, I, I don't want this to sound like we're, we're just here to promote what you guys do. Sure. But I'm curious because some of the things that you talked about, you know, are, are similar things that you could find on, you know, whether you're talking about the iTunes store or or Google Play, like, you know, uh, how can you help those, like maybe, like, because I'm not too familiar with what you guys did on a bookend, but how do you guys get some of those, like, unknown authors, the independent guys, how do you, other than some automated processes, how do you sort of float those things up so that they're discovered, so people will continue to want to do self-publishing? and Yeah, sure. So, first is, you, you, you know, you want to make sure the process is easy for publishing, and I, and I think that's relatively, um, uh, that's relatively um, common at this point. I think publishing for the various platforms has become easier and easier. Um, the second piece is, is um, through the direct relationships we have with developers. So a lot of people here work with um, the folks on our app store team or our retail business. And, and we work very, very hard to, to help promote them in the ways that are, make the most sense. By way of simple example is if if a developer is working on a game, you know, we, can, we can work with them to understand what other games that might be similar. So customers like these ideas where a new product is coming out and they might be interested in it because of its association with something they've already indicated that they like. So those are various mechanisms that are both, there's some amount of hand seeding in it, but there's also a lot of automation that occurs. That's, um, that just helps developers get discovered and reach more customers. And, and that's, and there's another aspect to it as well, which is the Amazon Coins program, where we thought about this notion of how do we give some sort of rewards as customers buy or play or whatever it happens to be. So we created this Amazon um, uh, Coins, where, where when customers buy certain items, they're able to get coins back uh, on their purchases to discover additional items. So we're always, there's a continual cycle of experimentation all through the, through the lens of how do we help more customers find the content that they would love. And there's just tremendous amounts of improvement and optimization that can be done on that front. And we've been working on it hard with our retail business for many years. And we're applying a lot of that to the App Store, but also inventing it along the way as well. Now, we heard today, uh, you know, Michael Pachter was saying councils are dead. And we're hearing a lot of numbers about how big the mobile market's growing. From Amazon's point of view, you know, where do you guys see the global market heading? And who do you think is kind of uh, doing things right, and who's, what's what's not happening that should be happening as the as gaming grows on a global? Sure. Market? So there's so on the on the where's gaming heading? I think there's a couple of things I would say there. First of all, as you talk to various people in the industry, and I've talked to many of the people in the room here as well as just others generally, I think the only common consensus you can get is not really sure. Like there's a lot of turbulence and interesting things happening and I don't know that anyone, I haven't met anyone yet that says, you know, this is where it's going and we know it. Obviously mobile is going to get, you know, going to continue to grow. I think that's an incredibly exciting area. Um, and the notion of multiplayer in the mobile context is going to, you know, continue to, uh, 
become more and more prevalent as the tools and the experiences get better. What it means to play games on a touch device, I think there's a lot of innovation happening there. But there's also tremendous amounts of innovation happening um, on non-mobile, like you know, PC, you look at Twitch as a great example, where there's a new way to consume and think about interacting with a game in the fiction that is the game and the community at large. And so there's tremendous, tremendous amounts of innovation. The one things that, you know, the couple things that are static and look like they're gonna continue are, there's more um, devices to play on, more, customer, more content to be played, and more customers playing than ever. And those, th those things uh, only continue to expand, and it's very, very exciting um, for the future. But as it relates to this is dead, this isn't dead, that type of pontification, I kind of think that um, uh, for the most part, people don't, it's, it's not always terribly clear. And so um, the companies that focus on customers and sort of really creating new, fresh experiences are the ones that ultimately are able to create um, traction. And you can see that, like I said, I mean, when people talked about PCs dead for a long time, I don't think that's sort of being talked about as much anymore. And then you can see things like Twitch or Oculus or whatever it happens to be and say, holy cow, these are brand new experiences that are totally exciting. And, and I thought, um, Rick Catello put it best, we you know, just talked about there just being three different screens that you can consume content on. And it's much, it's much less about a particular um, device type that's gonna, gonna succeed or fail over the long term as much as you have these different screens and as a customer, how do I help, how do, I wanna be able to engage with the fiction that I love and that I wanna you know, interact with in as many places where it makes sense and I, th and I find it fun. And so that's ultimately what's gonna drive it and you know, pontifications Outside of that, I think, you know, are hard to, I always, I always hesitate to, to con conceive of or offer up. All right, cool. Well, uh, are there any questions from the audience? Otherwise, we will wrap it up. Anyone? All right, cool. Oh, there is one back there. Uh, yeah. Microphone's coming. Um, I just had a quick question about what sort of monetization opportunities you thought through services like Twitch. Um, you know, it's easy to see it as sort of a video tool for advertising, but is there any sort of any any other applications of Twitch that you you see being like a revenue source? Uh, so I think I think there's a number of opportunities. I mean, we <laughs> there are a number of opportunities that we see very much in this vein. It is. Uh, uh, we have not mapped out the specifics that we're definitely going to pursue, so I'm hesitant to, 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 to offer up you know, big, um, big forward-looking statements. The general point is you have a whole body of customers that are aggregating to interact with games. It's not just about watching. I mean, if, you, if, you, if you interact much with Twitch, if you've, used the, if you've uh, been a viewer or a broadcaster or a publisher on the service, it's much more than just showing up and watching. There's a lot of participation involved and there's a discussion that's happening in and around the game industry. So if you think about that, and you saw Twitch plays Pokemon where someone actually created a game where the community's playing the game. Like, could that happen when the game's built from the ground up so that Twitch community's there to play it in the same fashion, and then maybe they sell it through that, things like that. So I think, um, I think there's tremendous um, opportunity for, from the standpoint of, of helping customers find, discover, and, and buy products on the, you know, through, the, sort of through the Twitch experience in a way that's, um, elegant and, and fits naturally in the overall sort of arc of what it means to participate in the community. All right, thanks very much, Mike. Appreciate right. it. Thank you.